Tom, it's time now for US news with the Queen of American Showbiz Royal and political reporting Kinsey Schofield. And Kinsey, great news for Princess Catherine, the Princess of Wales, Kate Middleton. Tell me more. OK, but I quickly just want to say I couldn't find my Santa hat. I'm loving the theme of this show, so <laughs> I'm wearing my mistletoe. Uh, I'll have my Santa hat ready next week. Um, but if we're being honest, these are mm. pretty common results. However, Harry and Meghan have been especially destructive towards the royal family over the last 12 months. So this is significant because it tells us that their actions have had little effect on public opinion here in the United States. Catherine, the Princess of Wales, dominates with a 44 percent favorability rating. Prince William comes in at number two with 36%. Prince Harry, 28%. Meghan, 21 The Daily Mail poll also revealed that 26% think that the Sussexes are far too involved in American politics. Mm. And that might be one of the reasons that Americans have lost interest in them. Uh, and really, it's less is more with, with the Princess of Wales. She hasn't campaigned to be popular. She's just quietly got on with the job. And Americans appreciate that. Yeah, I was thinking about that because Americans also love Princess Diana, and I think that yeah. the two women are so different. So I was like, why do we love Catherine and Diana? Because they're so far apart. Catherine is very quiet and, you know, she's just so delicate. And uh, But they're also both women that put their children first, are just stunningly beautiful and, and seem very compassionate and kind. So I do think that that's one of the reasons that Americans fawn over both of them. And also, to use a catchword in America, Kate is authentic, isn't she? And Americans pick up on that. Very sincere. She doesn't try so hard. Mm. And um, yeah, she's just she's it. She is authentic. She's gorgeous. And we do. We love her. Uh, let's talk about the brand. Harry and Meghan, apparently biggest losers. Tell me more. <laughs> I, when I was saying something about this around you know, at a bar last night, someone, um, a friend in the industry was like, oh, I bet she just hates this. The Hollywood Reporter, they've revealed the biggest Hollywood winners and losers of 2023. Harry and Meghan, who certainly consider themselves Hollywood elite, have found themselves on the loser's side, Mark. The article says, after a whiny Netflix documentary, a whiny biography, Spare, even the title is a pouty gripe, and an inert podcast, the Harry and Meghan brand swelled into a sanctimonious bubble, just begging to be popped. And South Park was the pen. The Hollywood Reporter, basically the Bible in this city. This has got to hurt Harry and Meghan personally. And it's got to have William Morris Endeavor, her current talent agency, scrambling to figure out what their next steps are. Are we being too harsh on the couple, though? Because if you think about it, we're talking about them. We talk about them every week. Uh, Megan's a beautiful young woman. And, uh, you know, Harry looks pretty smart in his suit there. Uh, they're a very rich couple. They're probably the most famous couple in the world now. So they're not getting it all wrong, are they? I think that Megan is a beautiful woman, but I wish that her physical appearance, I wish her insides were as pretty as her outsides are. Ooh. And I don't believe that to be true. I don't, I think that we in America were so excited to have the Duke and Duchess of Sussex here. And we've been lied to and manipulated along the way. And we're fed up. We don't, we don't, we don't deal with that well. Uh, let's talk about the author of this damning book, Endgame. It's all about the royal family. It's all about Harry and Meghan, written by their favorite journalist, Omid Scobie. And I think you've got a development on this. Well, on the internet, we call him Libraws, just uh, just so we're on the same page. If I accidentally refer to Omid Scobie as Libraws, I just want you to know who we're talking about. But he confirmed this week that an early and uncleared text of his book Endgame was sent to the Dutch publishers, who included the names in their translation, Omid says, in error. But in response, his publishers said that Omid's explanation was factually incorrect, and they do not recognize themselves in his representation of events. This is not a good look, Mark. This is an, a man that stays gainfully employed here in America on some of the biggest networks, ABC, NBC, and he's been caught blatantly lying not only media, but the public about the way this has unfolded. Of course, uh, you know, we, we need to say that he's not here to defend himself. We don't have tangible evidence that he's lied. But do you speculate that he deliberately put the names of 
Princess Catherine and the King, King Charles, into the book on purpose, almost leaking out the information. Is that your speculation? You're right. I mean, we should I should be clear that this could not be a lie. It could just be a case of unconscious lies. Omid Scobie could be completely <laughs> oh, innocent, Mark. I apologize. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a fan speculation even saying that maybe, you know, this could be all in an effort to justify if Meghan Markle is to write a book. Her being allowed to go into further detail about the incident without the public and uh, backlash from not only the public, but the palace, because she could just say, oh, it's already out there. It's, uh, it's already out there. I, I, just wanted to I just wanted to clear the air. Uh, let's talk now, if we can, Kinsey, about a significant piece of correspondence from the late great Queen Elizabeth II in regard to the Sussexes. What's, uh, what's that story all about? Yeah, this one's difficult, Mark, because there's so many spider webs when it comes to this. Um, but there's a letter from Queen Elizabeth that does state that she feels like she wants Harry and Meghan um, to have effective security. Mm. But in this letter being released, as Prince Harry challenges uh, the decision to not give him this additional level of security, it does seem to make Harry and Meghan look dishonest. It makes Oprah look like, you know, not a very good journalist because it's putting their version of events during the Oprah interview and during the Netflix series in doubt. So you are saying that this letter exists from the queen that says she wants you to have a, you know effective security well your entire narrative throughout the last few years is that the royal family took this from you that the royal family is the reason that you feel like your life is in jeopardy um, you know there's also been speculation online that the letter was oh. written well before Harry and Meghan's actions became so treasonous before they started accusing people of such horrible things in books and podcasts and on reality TV series or that this letter was written under the impression that this was only going to be a, that one year trial period that was discussed during the Sandringham summit where Harry and Meghan were going to test the waters in Canada. Uh, you would think there, watching that footage of our late great queen, though, that she would want Harry to have good security. I mean, what's your view on this? Um, I would so argue that I know he's left the country, he slagged off his family and he's a rich man, but... It wasn't his choice to be the son of the King of the United Kingdom. He will always be the son of the King of the United Kingdom, therefore a target. So controversially, and this won't make me popular, I think he should have top level British security for that very reason. What's your view? I mean, I think it's above my pay grade to determine if it, you know, the letter means that the Queen wanted Harry to have sure. a higher level of protection. But all I know is that Zara is a national treasure. And if she doesn't have it, why should the Markles? There you go. Uh, devastating and damning verdict. Kinsey, what a treat to have you back on the show. We'll see you in a week's time. Let me tell you that you can listen to Kinsey's excellent podcast. It's called To Die For Daily, and she has a website of the same name. Loving that mistletoe. Let me just mwah, embrace you under it, uh, Kinsey, and we look forward to seeing you in a week's time. You're also part of a very special New Year's Day show that we're doing on the 1st. I'll be honest, we're pre-recording it in the next couple of weeks, uh, but it will go out on the first. So I look forward to, uh, to being on the box then and uh, wishing you a very happy new year.